I'm Nancy. Thanks for stopping by my channel, A Square Pillow Isn't Square, where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Today's project is one I get asked about how to do a boxed chair cushion. This is something that is a little more intimidating or more complicated and people aren't really sure the best way to go about making a shaped cushion like this one where you've got an unusual shaped chair and you want to um, make a pattern or a template and get the cushion to fit it exactly. So today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I personally make these cushions. This way has always worked for me, so I'm hoping most of you home sewers will be able to follow along and make your own cushion. So let's get started. The supplies you'll need for this project are your decorator fabric, foam, cushion wrap, which is a kind of Dacron padding, spray adhesive, and a zipper. The video today is more about how to make the cover for the cushion. I did a separate video that's about how to cut and wrap foam for a cushion. So if you're not sure how to prepare your foam for your cushion, um, I will link here to that video. And then of course you'll need your pattern. I just take my pattern by pressing a piece of paper into my chair and tracing around it with a pencil or a crayon or anything and making a mark. Um, if I have a tie placement that I want to make a note of. All right, now we want to make sure our template is completely symmetrical, so fold it in half. And if you see any places like this where the edges don't line up perfectly, just even those out. You want both the right and the left side of your cushion cover to be completely symmetrical. All right, so now you have your template, but the pattern that you're going to use to make your cover has to be a little bit bigger because we need to allow for seam allowances. So now you're going to keep your template folded in half and you're going to fold another piece of paper in half and line the folded edges up. And now just add a half inch seam allowance all the way around, making sure to transfer your marking if you have a location where you want ties to go. Cut it out on the fold and now your pattern is ready to go. Now that we have our pattern for our top and bottom, we have to figure out how big to cut our boxing strips and our zipper strip. I always start by just taking a ballpark measurement of the entire length around the template that I've made. Because there's curved lines and unusual shapes, it's really hard to get accurate and there's actually no need to get accurate at this point. So as you can see, I've gone around the whole shape of my cushion, making sure to err on the side of a little bit too big rather than a little bit too small. And as you can see here, I am going to just call this measurement 72 inches. So just write down whatever number you get for that measurement. All right, next we're going to figure out how long we want our zipper strip to be. I want to make sure that it's big enough to get my foam inside without being any bigger than necessary. I tend to go about 25% roughly of, of a cushion that's this size. So as you can see in my case, that would be about 18 inches. But I'm going to add a couple of inches on each end of that strip. And I'm going to do that because I don't want my ties and my zipper strip to stop and start in the exact same place. That's going to be a lot of bulk and it's just going to be a little tricky having my zipper join, my zipper strip join, and my ties all in the same place. So I'm going to go beyond where my ties are a couple of inches on each end. So that would make my zipper strip 22 inches finished. Um, and again, I'm going to cut a little bit extra, a couple inches on each end of that. So I'm going to probably cut my zipper strip pieces about 26 inches long. You can always cut off the extra, but you're in trouble if you don't have enough. Okay, now the math is pretty easy. If we know it's 72 inches all the way around the cushion, and we want our zipper strip to be about 22 inches long finished, the difference is the length of our regular boxing strip, and that's going to be about 50 inches. Don't forget to add a couple of inches on each end to those measurements for your rough cuts. Now all we have to do is figure out how wide to cut our strips. This is a really easy measurement to figure out. All you have to do is measure the thickness of the foam that you purchased and add your seam allowances. So in my case, my strips are going to be three inches wide. Just a quick thing to mention here, this can be confusing to people because if you wrap your cushion in a thick Dacron wrap like I like to use, it's going to make the cushion appear to be a lot thicker than two inches. And you can see here that once my cushion is wrapped, it's actually measuring four inches. 
but trust me on this one. Go ahead, make your strip to finish at exactly the thickness of the foam, and this will help you make sure that your finished cover looks nice and full and plump and luxurious. All right, now it's time to cut everything out. I start by cutting out my top and bottom, and I make sure to take into account pattern placement. If there is one on your fabric, you want to make sure that you've centered the part of your pattern that you want in the middle of your cushion. And then I will often, especially if I have a pattern, I will often use my first cut piece to, come, to perfectly pattern match my second cut piece. And as you can see, I've laid one cut piece on top of my fabric in a location where I can perfectly match the pattern, and I'll use that one often as my template or my pattern to cut out my second piece. And don't forget to transfer your markings. I'll usually make a little notch at the location where my ties go, the location where my zipper strip is going to stop and start, the center back and the center front of my cushion. All right, now let's cut out our boxing strip. We're going to cut out our one big plain boxing strip and we're going to cut out the pieces for our zipper strip. Let's start with the zipper strip. Keep your pattern and direction in mind when you do this. And I'm going to cut out two pieces that are the size we determined. In my case, uh, 26 inches long and 3 inches wide. I'm going to cut out two of them, and then I'm going to press them in half wrong sides together so that you have two pieces that are each an inch and a half wide. And when those are put together with your zipper, that's how you'll end up with your 3 inch wide zipper strip. And you'll also need a zipper the same length as your zipper strip. You can either cut a piece of tape the way that I do. I buy zipper tape on rolls and put a pull on it, or you can purchase a zipper the length that you need. Let's just take 30 seconds here, and I'll just show you how to put these together since we've already got our pieces ready. Making a zipper strip is one of the easiest things there is to do. Take one of your zipper strips that's folded in half, wrong sides together, and just line it up to the edge of your zipper tape. You can pull this out of the way to get started if you want. Put your zipper foot on your machine and just sew along the top of it like this. Turn it over. Do the same thing. Now, if you want to, you can overlap this one a little bit so that your teeth are covered, or you can just butt it along the edge. The zipper on a cushion is always in the back. It's always hidden. No one's ever going to see it. But I'm just going to kind of butt them together and so. That's all there is to making a zipper strip, easy as can be. All that's left to cut out now are the optional things. Ties are optional and welt is optional. I'm not going to take the time to teach about making and applying welt in this video as I have several videos, one specifically that teaches about that, that you can look up on my channel. But don't forget if you are cutting welt, you need welt, enough welt for both the top and the bottom edges of your cushion. If you want to make ties, I'll take just a minute here to show you how I make my long narrow ties. I kind of like these narrow ties because they're easy to tie in a bow or a knot and adjust to the size of the chair rung that you're tying them to, but you can make them short and wider and overlap them with Velcro, or you can make wider bow ties. I mean, it's totally up to you, but I mean, I kind of like these narrow ties, so this is how I do it. I cut the fabric for my ties two inches wide, however long you want them to be. I usually cut mine about 22 to 25 inches long. And let's quickly go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I sew these up. I'll turn in one end. I'll turn in a quarter of an inch on each long end like that. And then I'll fold it in half. It's a little thick for my sewing machine, but it will go through. I think I'll use the shorter stitch. And now 
I just kind of turn a quarter inch, a quarter inch, and then fold it in half. If you want to pin it or press it, you can. But once you get going, it's it's pretty easy to it's pretty easy to just fold it as you go. That's all there is to narrow ties. And the other end I just leave raw because it's going to be sewn into the cushion. All right, let's put this thing together. Step one is if you are using welt, go ahead and make and apply your welt around both the top and bottom of your cushion. Next, if you are using ties, pin your ties in place at the location that you've marked. And next thing I'm gonna do is get my primary boxing strip and my little zipper strip pinned on. Um, so first thing I'll do is I will fold my zipper strip, uh, zipper strip in half and I will make a couple of notches. I like to do this too where the boxing strip is going to be on the bottom when I sew. So I'm going to put my pins in on the cushion side so my boxing strip is on the bottom. I'm just going to do that all the way around. When I get to a corner what I'm going to do is sort of put a pin in. I'm going to feel on my on my welt. When this is sewn what is the pivot point of that corner? And it's right there. So I'm going to make a little clip on a diagonal. You don't want to go past your seam allowance, so if I have a half inch seam allowance, I want to make sure my clip doesn't go past that. But I'm just going to make a clip about to that point. give it a nice sharp pivot. Make sure it's there's no extra there's no extra fabric there. I want a nice sharp turn. And I'm just going to keep pinning. Now this little notch right here is where I want my zipper strip to stop and start. So I'm going to pin my boxing strip to about here. And I'm going to do the same thing and pin my zipper strip to about here, and then I'll show you how I end these and even them off. I'm going to start with my boxing strip on the bottom. I'm going to sew my zipper strip on most of the way, and I'm going to sew my plain boxing strip on the most, most of the way. my notch so I'm going to start a couple of inches away. Sometimes the easiest way for me to make the pivot is I'm going to unpin this. Because see how it can kind of get bunched up? What I want to do is just sort of open that up and you can see my little notch and how it's going to end up right at my pivot point. So I'm going to open it up to turn the corner. Sometimes I'll do one little 45 degree angle stitch around the corner and then I'll pick it up and you want to make sure you pull this out of your way and then your raw edge and you make sure everything's nice and flat and your raw edges should line up again. And then just keep going. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just take all these pins out. I'll even move that one up a little so that I can flatten this strip out just like I did on the other side. Get everything out of the way. I 
nicely those raw edges line up. I feel a bump. Ah, see, that's, that's folded down. You want everything to be nice and flat. And there's my notch, so I'm going to stop and start a couple inches away. I'm going to show you how I trim these um, boxing ends down, and then I'll also show you how I deal with the tab side of the zipper strip. So I'll find my little notch of where my zipper, a little notch I made where my zipper um, will stop and start. And I'll fo fold my boxing strip on that mark. And I'll measure about two inches in. Actually, not two inches in, two inches out. Two inches toward the two inches toward the end. Okay. So you want that nice and straight and lined up. mark here too to help me to help me measure okay on this end when you cut your two inches off you want to make sure excuse the sharpie that your zipper pull is out of the way but it's still laying nice and flat like that all right I'm going to cut my excess off like so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There's my notch. There's my little notch. I'm going to put a pin there. All right, so now, let me get this out of the way. I know that I've got to mark two inches, so now I will. Join my strips together. So I'll line this one up here. And this one here. And this is where you want to just sort of do your best to make sure your tape is laying nice and flat. See that? going to make my two inch mark where my seam line is going to be. And what I do here is I take a little scrap of fabric from my trash and I'm going to sew over this fabric. Sometimes the foot doesn't want to sew nicely over this zipper tape, but you do have to sew through it. So I will do it this way. I'll lay a piece of fabric on top of it. It helps to give it a nice, smooth, strong place to seam. Lining up my little marks. I'm going to go over this a bunch of times. Right back up my other mark. And then I'll just tack this down here. Just to keep it out of the way. Okay. In fact, if you want, you can even that off. So now when you open this up, you see you have a nice strong seam and your zipper tab is, is clear. I'm going to press this big seam allowance away from the zipper because you don't want to fold it onto itself. And again, see it's, I like to do it from the side, it's lining up perfectly.
Now what I want to do is finish this side completely. So at this point, I don't know about you guys, um, but I do not have an upholstery machine. I do not have a walking foot machine. The thread that my sewing machine accepts is really lightweight. And on a, on a cushion like this with a thick upholstery fabric, one line of stitching is really pretty weak and it's, it's probably not going to hold up real well. So I always go over my cushion two times. Um, so that at this point, I'm just going to open it up, make sure that I like how everything looks. I like my corner. See how nice that corner looks? Make sure I don't have any pleats or anything that I don't like. I'll just take a quick look around, make sure my join looks right, my ties are laying nice and flat. So once I know that this layer of boxing strip is on, um, the next thing I'll do is just pin this in place. And I do that just by pressing this fold down and making sure it's laying nice and flat like that. I'll pin these layers together. And I'll do it on the other side. Like I said, now before I put the other side on, I'm going to go back. And this time I'm going to flip it over. This time I'm going to sew with the boxing strip up. Sometimes when you switch directions, it helps you snug up your stitching line a little bit closer to your welt if you have welt. And the other thing it does, it helps me make sure that um, I, if I have any um, pleats or anything that's caught on the fabric, I can correct it. So I'll just, oh, and the other thing I'll do is I'll take this opportunity when I'm going over a stress point like where these ties are. Um, I'm going to make sure that I do quite a few back tacks, forward and backward stitching over that stress point. So I'm just going to zip around this really quick. So here's my ties. I'm going to carefully go back and forth over that for a little bit. And I'm just going to zip around the cushion from this direction. When you get to the corner, just make sure this boxing strip is pulled away. You don't want to get any pleats. See how I'm going to pull it out of the way like that? see pretty well on this darker color how much closer I got that second time. So it's going to be double strength and nice and close to your welt. All right, all that's left is pinning it onto the um, other side of the cushion and I'll show you how, to, how I do that. Okay, this side is easier to do and all I have to do on this side is transfer some markings so that my boxing strip, like for instance, when I go to um, put my corner on here. I don't want it to, to get skewed. I don't want my boxing to get twisted or warped. So I just have to transfer some markings. The way that I do that is on my corners, right where that turn is, I will fold my cushion, lining up my straight edges, lining up my boxing strip edges, making sure that my fabric is nice and straight, and I can do a little clip or I can do a my grandma's pins. I can do a pin. So I want to make sure when I make my little diagonal clip to um, to turn my boxing strip, I want to make sure that it ends right at that same corner. So this is how I do my corners. And that way when I line those up on the other the other half of the cushion, my boxing strip will be nice and straight and square. I have some nice lines here too that are helping me see that I'm doing it straight. So now I know where my corners are going to be. I already have a notch in my center front so that's going to automatically line up. Um, my notch 
is lining up with the fold on my boxing strip, so I'm just going to line that up to the existing notch on the other side. And the same thing, the back has already got a notch and I have a center back on, um, on my other cushion and on my boxing strip. So at this point, now that I've marked my corners, all I have to do is pin it on, lining up all my notch uh, notches and marks, and sew it on just like I did the first time. All right, I'm just going to finish pinning this. I'm going to line up this pivot point. I'm going to line up my, my notch here. I don't know if you can see it. My notch to my where my zipper strip ends. I'm just going to line it up all the way around and then sew it, check it, go back over it a second time, and make sure, though, that your zipper is open so that when you're done sewing, you can reach in and turn it right side out. There you go. Perfect custom made shaped cushion with a boxing strip welt and ties to perfectly fit your template. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you get notified when I post other videos. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching and happy sewing.